What we're going to do today, we're going to take you back in a time machine, back to 1973. We had just joined the EC, considering the palaver there is us now trying to get out. That's quite entertaining. We're in the middle of some horrendous IRA bombing, so a very different world. Three-day week came into operation. Now, when we were talking about Andrew, I had to be reminded that it meant you only got paid for three days during the week, rather than that sounded a good idea. <laughs> Having said that, I don't know if you've seen the recent report that there's a call centre that's now going to be introducing four days a week where people are actually going to be paid for five days a week. Well, I'm not sure if that's going to work, but 73, a very, very different time. Gordon Banks retired. Given that Gordon had only just died, that's interesting looking back at that period of time, nearly 50 years ago. But I've digressed a little. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Neil Grierson, I'm the head of the Clapham and Collins Family Department. Uh, our other speakers today will introduce themselves when they talk, Emerald and Caroline. And very cruelly, uh, we've tagged this as past, present and future. I get the past. And Caroline in particular has been really horrible in terms of age and me remembering 1973. You've done, well you're too young and okay, you're too young. Yeah. But why 1973? Why are we banging on the drum today about 1973? What's the significance of that? Matrimony Causes Act. The divorce law now is 1973, Matrimony Causes Act. Taking you back a few hundred years before that, uh, the church was in control of divorces on the basis that people got married for life. And you didn't get divorced. I guess during that period, people lived longer so it didn't have the same significance it does now. But moving forward from that, um, it then only became divorced by Act of Parliament. It then became only men being able to get divorces, rich men getting divorces. And it was only really around the two world wars that social change really had an impact on family law and divorce law. The 73 Matrimonial Causes Act really came about because of what was the 1969 Divorce Reform Act and a groundswell of feeling that there needed to be a way for a divorce to take place. Now bearing in mind during the 60s we had the bizarre situation of couples booking into CD seaside hotels, not like the beach should I say, uh, but booking in and then being photographed committing adultery so they get a divorce. Madness. So leading up to 69 and 73, uh, there was an awful lot of public feeling that there should be a fairer way for a divorce to take place. Not a demand, but a way of a divorce actually taking place. And the law now is as in 1973. So there's only one ground for a divorce, and that's if a husband or wife believe that marriage is finally broken down, irretrievably broken down, but they need to show that in one of five ways. So a divorce can only be based at the moment on adultery, unreasonable behaviour, desertion for two years, separation for two years where the couple both agree at the end of the two years, and lastly after five years separation whether or not they both agree. Caroline's job is going to be updating you about the reform, how things are proposed to be changed. Now bearing in mind that I have got more grey hair and I am more cynical and I keep saying this we have to be really quite careful about that because I remember not that long ago, in the late 90s, uh, when reform was proposed at the divorce law then. It failed. It was under the Family Law Act of 1996. It failed because of lack of money, because there were information meetings that people had to attend to be told about the repercussions of divorce, and the government realised it didn't have the money to do that. And the Family Law Act itself was a mishmash of lots of things, uh, and the divorce part of it got lost. Over the years, the Matrimonial Causes Act has changed a little. To begin with, it used to be that you had to be married for a period of three years before you could have a divorce. Now, it's one year. But even just looking back to Sunderland Leeds Cup Final, 50 years ago, very, very, very different situation in society that we have now. Has divorce law kept up? That's one of the huge challenges, and one of the things we're going to pose questions to you about, whether it has or not. But one thing that has not kept up is the law around people living together, cohabitees. And 
although it's about now one in two marriages ending in divorce, the big growth area is people that are not married that are living together, cohabiting. What the lawyers cringe when it's called common law husbands and wives. Now, I shouldn't even call it common law husbands and wives, and Caroline will tell me off. Because by doing that, I've just extended that. I've really actually given you the idea that it means something. But if, you know, Alex is shaking her head, you know, you've seen this. Yeah, but people only realise the problem when it becomes a problem. When one of the couple dies, when they split up. And there's this huge urban myth that whether it's three years, five years, seven years, ten years, after a period of time, you get rights. You have kids, you get rights. But you don't. And that's a huge problem that we have as lawyers. We see it when the problems arise. Getting that message out is really very difficult. Now, again, Carolyn's going to talk about proposed reform, about how actually rights are given to people living together. And that's the can of worms, whether that's right or wrong. Uh, I stand on the, the side of saying, well, you can get married. It's now available for same-sex relationships. Why should you give rights to people that decide to live together? It's a huge can of worms. Uh, if you did go and talk to how many at Liverpool last night? I don't know how many thousands there? 80,000? 70,000? If you ask them, I think half the people there, if they were that bothered while well, Liverpool were scoring four goals, uh, they would have said, yeah, of course you get rights. And the assumption is that you do. Let me take you forward just a little bit in time to 1975 to the Inheritance Provision for Family and Dependents Act, what the lawyers call the Inheritance Act. That in itself is groundbreaking because, in essence, what that act does is to give a member of family the opportunity to complain about how their husband, their wife, their mum, whoever it is, has made provision in their will, and they don't like that. It's not what they think is fair. Is that fair? If you decide, Julie, if you want to give your money to Battersea Blocks Home, why should a member of your family afterwards, well, please don't die, but would say, well, that's wrong. They want your money. Shouldn't you be able to give your money to the Baxi Dogs home? Well, I don't know. Again, it's a can of worms. But the 75 Act was quite significant. It also changed in the late 90s because what it was extended to do is to cover people living together, cohabitees, common law husbands and wives. And it's one of the few pieces of legislation that actually has been extended to people that are not married. Is that fair? Again, can of worms. And now we move on to 1986. Caroline is, is raising her eyebrows because she knows what this means. Anybody in the room tell me what happened in 1986? It's when I qualified. Uh, but it's also then looking at what the changes are since 86. For me, some of the big changes are that it was guaranteed then, when I started practicing, that somebody that was financially eligible used to get legal aid. You used to have what's called green form advice. Do you remember green form, Rosemary? legal advice and assistance. People could go into most solicitors' offices and get a limited amount of free legal aid advice. Now, there weren't any fat cat lawyers making tons of money out of it that flatly has been portrayed as a reason why legal aid was stopped. But a whole different world then. Now, I guess as well that lawyers at the time didn't have to market. They didn't have to go out and win works. I suppose they didn't have seminars like today. Uh, but it's a whole different situation that clients used to accept what you said. They took your word for things. They took the advice. They acted on the advice. Uh, they didn't then want to complain on own about it. And that's a very different situation in society, again, than we have now. But that change in legal aid is fundamental. Massively different then to now. People still bought and sold houses. People still went through divorce. But the availability of legal aid is fundamentally different to it is now. Now, let me bring you forward just a little bit. 1989, the Children Act, because another important stage in legislation. Uh, it only really came into force in 1991. But the Children Act itself was very radical. It was more than just changing terminology. Before that, we had custody, we had care and control. Uh, and after that, we were into concepts parental responsibility. Not parental rights, responsibility for children. Uh, we also had child arrangements orders, <coughs> residence, contact. 
But the significance is that it's changed an awful lot. Back in 1989, 1991, it was never really thought of that dads could get involved and be <coughs> at home looking after children. When I was a kid, uh, my mum gave up work. My dad carried on working, my mum gave up work to look after me and my sister. Nothing wrong with that, it was what people did at that time. Very, very different now in different societies. Dads are actively involved. We're now more involved with <coughs> shared care. Dads being involved with mum. And although parents still find no end of ways to argue and fall out, the concepts, the change are very different. <coughs> with divorce law, it used to be under matrimonial causes that the judges with every divorce had to be satisfied that the arrangements for children were fair. At one point, you won't know this, no, you weren't practising then, uh, they had a hearing when judges had to be satisfied to allow a divorce to take place. Very different now. The Children Act introduced the concept of no order. You don't have to have a court order unless you need a court order. But all of that put together, I think, should show that there's been a massive amount of change. We are now nearly 50 years on from the Matrimonial Causes Act. The change in society, the change in attitudes, behaviour. I mean, Liverpool are still very good now as they were then, so I guess some things don't change. <coughs> but it's hugely different. Has the law kept up with that? And that's what we're going to talk about now.